Today we're talking trading mean reversion with these small exchange products uh, using the most recent product that we've added to the suite here, small treasury yield, uh, as the primary example because uh, you're going to find here in a second it's one of the only examples that you should be using with mean reversion trades. I mean, we're seeing all-time highs again in equities today. And uh, spoiler alert, we've seen all-time highs in equities for the last five years. Not a great mean reversion trade. But before we get to that, a little bit of uh, background on this product, S10Y. It's a futures product that moves about $0.40 cents or $40 per day. It's got a margin of under $200. Could be a little bit north of that depending on your broker. And it's the first product to be priced in yield, whereby you're getting rid of DV01, you're getting rid of fractions, you're getting rid of coupons and, and uh, uh, these other things that uh, have been barriers to entering the interest rate trade, Pete, for so many different people. It's like, it's, it's like you have to take a whole class in uh, interest rates and a class in uh, how to price a treasury with par values and everything else to trade this product. And, and we wanted to create a scenario where it's like, yeah, you don't have to understand how Apple works to trade its stock. Right. Why would we have to understand all these things about interest rates before trading it? It's as simple as you see the 10 year yield at 95 basis points or 0.95%. Our product is going to look very similar, nine and a half dollars. And it's going to fluctuate with that yield as opposed to the products of the past like ZN the 10 year uh, treasury future uh, that uh, 95 basis points in yield, uh, it relates to $137.10 and 10 30 seconds, which uh, I don't know what that means. Does that mean anything to you? No, but I think uh, that in a nutshell, that explains to you why that is, why that makes it a little bit more of a challenge. But, uh, you know, uh, you, the binary decision. If I think something's going higher, I want to buy it. If I think something's going lower, I want to sell it. I know the outcome if I'm right or wrong. That in and of itself is simplification of trading rates now, where previously start with the inverse relationship and then lose everybody with the complexity. So that's it. That's just the story here. It's a it's, $1 uh, Don't you feel bad? Go to work. <laughs> don't you feel bad that the story is that simple? I've gotten several, and I'm sure you have as well, Pete, emails or Twitter interactions where someone is like, Okay, so so your product is the inverse of the price, and it's like, listen, man, you forget about price completely. Right. Throw price out the window. It's as simple as yield goes higher, our product goes higher, and vice versa. You no longer have to worry about don't in interest rates. You don't have to bring up inverse ever again here. Moving uh, past that, I want to talk about trading mean reversion a little bit with this product as as the uh, the example, the conduit to today's mean reversion conversation. Um, the, the first, I think the first idea with interest rates, especially here in 2020, as we border on 2021, is our rates going normal? Or are they going negative? Are, are they gonna go down to zero? Right. And this product is, is built for negative uh, values. Are they gonna go negative like Japan and Eurozone, these other, play, these other central banks throughout the world? Or are we gonna revert to normal? Now I have an opinion on that, Pete has an opinion on that, but your opinion is all that uh, matters when it comes yes. to trading it. And it's easy to uh, to to formulate that opinion, hopefully. And then it's we know it's easy to bring that opinion to action here in the market. Because if you think it's rates are going to normal, you buy, you think they're going to negative, you sell, there's no inverse or anything like that. What I do want to talk about, though, is putting opinions aside, because a lot of people don't like to have opinions in terms of speculative trades in the market and, uh, you know, uh, active traders a lot of times. I know there's a big faction of people who like to dig deep into Tesla's earnings and uh, uh, all these different accounting values for a company like Tesla and then make you know one bet uh, for the next five years of where Tesla is going to go. We're not super into that. We're into active trades on a daily basis. You know what can I how can I create edge and how can I make some money in the next you know 10 minutes? And this is an interesting market for this idea of mean reversion here, Pete, whereby you ditch your opinions, you draw a line like I have here in the, <laughs> in the middle of the chart, and you say, okay, if it's above that line, I look at selling it. If it's below it, uh, I look at buying it. It's not as simple as that, but that's like the, the core theme of mean reversion, right? You're muted there, me boy. Um, 
my apologies. Yeah, and that is the that's the key point of mean reversion is you need something neutral too. You need a neutral security. What I mean by that is one that doesn't have an upside or downside bias to it. And treasuries are that perfect, you know, yeah. uh, neutral security. They can, as you said, that we can go through zero as well as going back to 2%. So it's a true neutral security. When you have that, then mean reversion trading becomes a very powerful tool. Absolutely. And so I want to actually dig deep into what you exactly just said, because, you know, here we have about two or three years of data for S10Y, the index, and the futures that just started trading recently. I want to go even further back and look at data for this 10-year yield going all the way back to 2010. This is a decade now of data. And what you see here is something that is beautiful to the eye of mathematicians or, or theoretical uh, uh, based traders who look at mean reversion and say, oh man, like uh, this value here of about 2%, this market has danced around it, oscillated around it like a sine wave. It's beautiful. Like, it, Of course, there are outliers where it gets, oh man, it got up to $40 before coming back down to this mean, or oh man, it got down to almost $5 before coming not, back to this mean. It's not a perfect thing where but if it was perfect and it was like, if it gets to 25, it immediately comes back. And if it gets to 15, it immediately comes back. If it was that perfect, I, I mean, I wouldn't be doing the show because I'd be a millionaire somewhere. But uh, it is a beautiful thing to see, especially for people who like to trade, whether you call it price extremes or mean reversion or, or whatever, it's all kind of the same thing. And this has worked for the last decade uh, here, Pete, where you're just looking at getting on the other side of uh, we always use the rubber band as an analogy where it's like, okay, like th this market has a, a rubber band effect to it where it can stretch out a certain amount like, uh, you know, the upside here in 2010 or the upside seen here just about two years ago, getting uh, north of this $30 value or 3% yields. It can stretch out like that, but inevitably it does come back in this mean reverting fashion. And so when it stretches out, that's what we're looking for. And right now I would contend we're on that stretched out rubber band effect to the downside. And I think we're in the midst of it coming back to that mean a little bit. Now you try to, like I said, uh, with uh, uh, the utmost nuance, draw this line across, this, <laughs> across the, uh, the, the chart here. You try to create a mean for equities, Pete. You can't do it because the mean in 2010 is different than the mean in 2014, is different than the mean in 2016, is different than, <laughs> by golly, is different than the mean here in 2020. Uh, at no point could you say, oh, I'm going to buy it because it's below the mean or sell it because it's above the mean and it reverts back. Uh, and equities, it just doesn't work. No, right. It's not a neutral security. And uh, honestly, Frankie, I've got a hat I wanted to find. I got it somewhere that on the floor, the big thing was, was the Dow going to break 1,000 in the early 80s? And I remember the Dow. What? One, yes, the Dow 1,000 hats. I, I think it was 1,000. I got to go back and look. But it was the Dow 1,000 hats. And um, maybe I'm, I, I've got the wrong value, but I, I want to go find the hat. Because it was now, in hindsight, such an incredibly small number. And it was looked at like, oh, my God, look, look at the peak. We've scaled. I think, you know what, if you went back to uh, 2000, 2010, you draw that line and it would still be an incredibly frustrating line. So um, absolutely. I, I mean, it, it, when I started trading in 2015, it was a matter of and I'll move the line around uh, uh, thusly. It was a matter of can we hold on to 2000 right. in S&Ps? This is the S&P 500 benchmark. And then, you know, OK, they broke through 2000. And then here in 2018 and 2019, it was like, oh, can they hold on to 3,000? And guess what? We're at 3,600 here today in S&Ps. And like you said, back in 2010, it was 1,000. You know, so like you can't create a mean here anywhere on the chart for equities because they have positive drift. Of course, there are stock market crashes like 2008, 2009. There's a dot com boom of 2001 and, e and everything like that, the boom and sure. bust there. Uh, sure. But like Pete said, if you're looking at the 80s, the 90s, the early aughts, the 2010s, or even a couple months ago, equities tend to ascend higher. Whereas here in the interest rate market, you've got something that in that long term, of course, it trends in the short term and medium term. 
in different directions and it can go against you and you rarely pick the high or the low. But in the long term, this thing has been a mean reverting asset class. And then I'll conclude with just, so how do you mean revert? Well, you can do so on a daily basis here uh, at the, sub, uh, the subscriber newsletter here for the small exchange. Check out subscribers.thesmallexchange.com. They're getting this content with updated values uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, whatever, you don't necessarily need this to take advantage of mean reversion in S10Y and the interest rate uh, asset class. But you can look at it on a daily basis. This is what I used to do at the Board of Trade. And I'm sure you did as well, Pete, back in the 80s and 90s with trading FX in the pits, which is, okay, if it moves outside of its range, right. I'm going to bet on some mean reversion back into the range. You can look at it on the weekly basis. Here we've got the five-day forecast, what's supposed to happen in the next week. If it moves north or south of that range, I bet on some mean reversion coming back to the middle. Or like we've highlighted here, yeah. you could do it on a monthly basis, right. yearly basis, whatever. Basis, sure. mean, it's it's a once again, I, I can't talk about this enough from the mathematical theory side. It's really a beautiful concept because any time period you want, you can look at mean reversion. You can look at it on a minute by minute basis, or like like we're looking at here, a year or decade long basis uh, in terms right. of mean reversion. And it's something that's consistently shown uh, to be true. So that's mean reversion with the smalls.